the best of the Americans, working hard, playing hard Americans in the asset column because of sacrifice and risk and right. work ethic and productivity and, and dedication to God, family, country. Every time those Democrats speak, the good Americans of the country go, huh? Yeah. What? Now, let me ask you this. Do you always take it in stride in the sense that, uh, you know, some performers get nervous before they go on stage? I've always been one of those people. So before stand-up, I, would, I always get really nervous. Some people love it. Have you been the latter your whole life, or did you start off kind of nervous? 6,717 concerts later, I am so enthused about going on stage. And I've been clean and sober for 70 years. I have no drugs, no alcohol, no tobacco, no fat girlfriends. That stuff will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I, my, all my stuff works pretty good. How how far can I go on the podcast? Oh, that's, that's, yeah, 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 as far as because you want. I, Take I it think away. the only way to accurately and honestly express my life is that my entire being is like a purple rimmed. Dick. It's really susceptible to any stimuli. Yeah. I really am energized by all things life. In a matter of speaking, though, kind of. All, all d- are purple rimmed effectively. Well, but when you mine think about is it. my life. It's not just my, it's not an apparatus. It really is the spearhead of breathing. It's like I I don't miss a thing. When I get ready to go on stage, I can't wait to play these licks. It's like a horny kid in a garage at the age of twelve with his first loud amp. That's an analogy that'll be lost on some. Think uh, with an iPhone. <laughs> No, <laughs> for some kids who don't get the garage. Oh, yeah. it was a they garage. didn't have the poster of Fair yeah, Fawcett. They, we actually they just, practiced. Yeah. You know, there's actually calluses on my hand. It's called work ethic. You yeah. might look it up. I don't think it's. I have calluses anymore. too, but it's just because uh, pornography is more. So I, it's a different kind I, of I don't get nervous, but I am really, really excited. First off, I, I'm somewhat jealous because I've always been a very anxious person before performances. For me, I hate it. I get nervous. I want to quit before every stand-up but show. But you have confidence in what you're about to do. Uh, no. Oh I, my, no! Here's actually what happens. I have this window where I go. I've forgotten everything because I've had nightmares like this. Where I go out on stage and I really? forget my set, and then I go out there, and after the first laugh, I go into autopilot. What if there wasn't a first laugh? Then I want to swallow a knife. But before going on stage, very nervous, and then on stage, I'm just enjoy excited. it. And yeah. by the way, um, it, it really do, I play for. Greg and Jason and I, and this weekend John and Johnny and I, I play for the music. The music, my record, my new record's called "The Music Made Me Do It," and that goes all the way back to when I was seven or eight, hearing this new outrageous Little Richard stuff. Are you kidding me? And Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley, how how can you not be motivated to dance, not just literally but figuratively through life, right. with that kind of authoritative, soulful black? powerful music so luckily here is 2019 are you kidding me and i still love i love it more now than ever so i don't have time to be nervous i just have to calm myself down what well, that'll be the day yeah. and, and, but so that i remain musical sure and and the intensity of my musical love is uh you, unleashed upon fellow music do you find lovers. a reason to you get so enthused you just mentioned the great musicians you work with for me before i do a show or even before we do this show I can't watch, I don't like watching myself, but I get really excited to see what they do. So if it's a sketch or there's some kind of after uh, effects or some post work, I go, oh man, this isn't like me watching myself. I get to see what the whole team put together and I'll sit and watch those sketches or sit and watch, you know, Garrett wow. perform in something because it gets me excited because it's like watching a play. work? Yeah, you know, for me, it's all prep. I don't, you know, when you're performing in this, you don't really get to enjoy it as much. It's not like music in the same way where... Um, you don't feel it the same way. Stand up, you do. Well, I, if, if you, you got to come to my show. I am stand up. I'm like Sam Kinison meets Richard Pryor with his afro on fire. I'm a <laughs> funny, funny son of a bitch on stage. I, I intertwine. I mean, think of the songs. It's serious songs like Fred Bear and Stranglehold, which is the greatest love song ever. Uh, but when I break into a Wango Tango or Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang, um, I wax eloquently. My wife waxed eloquently last week. It was awesome. And, On uh, stage? No. Oh, okay. a private affair. All right. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so I, I go into outrageous, you know, anecdotal um, histrionics of my own personal adventures almost like lewis and clark with sacagawea on stage and off and i i'm able to get a lot of a lot of chuckles on the out of the audience every night in fact if you go to my facebook people say it's the funniest comedy routine and the greatest rock and roll how much of that ever. do you think is like is writing versus like being you know uh like uh, ostentatious pricky probably a hundred percent 
<laughs> you know, I didn't invent the middle finger, but I perfected you it. Did. You did. You turned it into an art. And mine happens to be on fire. Um, but, but so I use that wherever I can. It's it, well, and I think that's what people probably really appreciate about people, and not just not just, not just yourself, but there. I feel like there's. Um, I was just reading an interview. I think recently. Maybe not recently, but it was with Alice Cooper and uh, Rob Zombie. And Good they were friend. talking about... Good friends, yeah. He was saying that a lot of the hard rock guys, because they came from the Midwest and working class backgrounds, sure. um, they've had more longevity, a lot of them. If you look at how they're touring and how even... you know, Bob even if Seger on the road right now. Yep. Yeah. Me on the and road And still right creating now. more music. That's right. And your, you, your tour starts, your next tour is... Uh, next next month, July and August, all across the hinterland, yes. It's called lucky, The Music Made Me Do It Again. Lucky, right? lucky me. The music made me do it again. You, you, Stephen, I can tell by the, the look in your eyes. You have to see my band. You have I want to, to hear this band. music. There's no music like this. This is we're the last of them. I would love to see it at one of the Scandinavian shows you just mentioned that because would, that well, seems like it would be a trip. Do they sing along in English? They do absolutely, especially <laughs> Wang Dang. <laughs> do they have Cause accents? Because that's, that's against the law over there. We were in Japan last year. Played in Okinawa for the Marines. God, am I lucky? Um, and I go on my Facebook. We got people from every imaginable culture, society. Um, uh, part of the world geography it's fascinating because music is a universal communication yeah and when you unleash it without any pre-thought any pretense any filter any pc worry that someone might have their feathers ruffled by the way i don't ruffle feathers i pluck them <laughs> and uh and you'll see that what i represent is available everywhere Scandinavia, they don't have a constitution. The British don't have a constitution. Uh, they don't really have the freedoms that are unique to this wonderful experiment in self-government. But they hear it. And it's relative to what you just said about Detroit. What Motown, Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels, the MC5, now with Kid Rock and even Eminem. I'm not a big fan of that kind of music, but he certainly has a musical authority. Um, all the way back to the Rationals and Brownsville Station and the Scott Richardson case and so many bands, just unbelievable bands in Michigan. What do you and, think it is about Detroit? Well, I hope people write this down. The definitive soulfulness and authority of all things Motown that was exemplified by my Amboy Dukes band, certainly Brownsville Station, certainly the MC5 before the drugs destroyed them, right. and certainly Bob Seger. It was all rhythm and blues. It was all gospel. It was all blues-oriented. Uh, James Brown was a bigger influence before the Stones and the Beatles were ever heard of. Right. Um, and Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley well, and Little Berry Richard. Chuck Berry wrote a lot of the early Beatles songs, too, didn't well, he? Well, the first yeah. Beatles and Stones album was Chuck Berry songs, Bo Diddley songs, and Motown songs. <laughs> right. Because it was inescapable. If you loved any kind of music, the 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 work ethic that the Funk Brothers in the basement of Hitsville, U.S., USA, and all the bands I just mentioned, we practice our asses raw. Right. There was a competition not to beat the other band, but to be tighter, to have more adventurous music, to have whatever it was that Chuck and Bo and Little Richard and these black monsters of authoritative music coming out of the worst crime of mankind, slavery, blues, heartbreak, anger, frustration, to the celebration that Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley's uppityness brought to it, and Little yeah. Richard personified it, that free, free at last. Yeah. There's, when I'm jamming, there's no Hillary Clinton, there's no Benghazi, there's no you know, <laughs> open borders, there's right. no you know, killing babies on tables, there's no hate for America, there's no politics, there's no negative, there's no pain, there's no suffering. It is so cleansing. And it fortifies you so you can go, when you're done with the cleansing, you can go and attack those evil things that are ruining America. Do you think while you were, if, when you were hypothetically in your next sort of out-of-body experience talking about sort of being that one pulsating entity in the music, do you think you'd be distracted if uh, Beto O'Rourke came by on a skateboard? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I, I'd cause him to crash, though, I promise you that. <laughs> he'd run put, put, right put into out. the damn wall. I feel like that's something he would do to just to try and appeal to the youngins. And then with uh, gentleness and... Uh, um, almost parental type authority. We'd strap his lame ass to my amplifiers and just <laughs> pummel some guitar. And then put mix. him on top of the Pilatus and yeah. then just see how far, see how no, far he goes. No, under the Pilatus. Well, it's just funny we you mentioned test him for the yeah. clearance. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned what a um, dirt bag, huh? Uh, you know, Detroit also became kind of a proving ground. 
uh, you know, when I used to read up on, and my mother-in-law, you know, toured with Aretha Franklin, uh, Joni Mitchell, Stevie Aretha Nicks, The Grateful Franklin. Dead. So she was a backup singer for a lot of them. No kidding. And on four, she, she could tell you some stories. She I'll probably play some music told of you hers. that if you make in Detroit, you can make it anywhere because those people know music. Yeah. And she, she uh, has some stories. I mean, her father passed when she was really young, so she was touring as a teenager, basically would sometimes I think have to, I don't know, she's going to oh, get mad God. about me, lie about her age to even get into some of these venues. That's awesome. Um, what an adventure. Did yeah, she some of those adventures with you? Uh, sh- yeah, but I don't know what I'm allowed to tell because now <laughs> she is just, she is the sweetest, you know, uh, Christian lady. Great, fantastic. I don't awesome. mean how to touch at all, but she doesn't want to know probably some of the uh, the magic mushrooms that she took back in the day. Well, sure. I, I was against all that because I had to step over all these great friends and, and phenomenally gifted musicians. I mean, if you could have, if the world could have just witnessed Gregorama, this bass player, this kid from Detroit who played on the first Amboy Dukes, Journey to the Center of the Mind. He, I mean, the Funk Brothers would come and watch us to watch Greg play. Yeah. And then the, the, the lie, the peer pressure, nonsense, scam, it, it took so many of them over. You know, there's strong people and then there's weak people. And if there's any moment of weakness, um, you start thinking that comfortably numb will make you play better. Yeah. I don't want my bass player comfortably numb. Prior to the election night in 2016, where I, I wrapped up my wallpaper carpet bomb PR campaign, obviously PR stands for public relations. I related to the public with truth, logic, and common sense. You know, radical stuff like the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence, Ten Commandments, Golden Rule, and all that really nasty stuff. Yeah. Um, and... I did a, a Facebook Live from my Michigan cabin, very emotional, because I was with Trump till 3 in the morning on the night, election night. And as the numbers were coming in, I saw the results. And I didn't do it alone, the National Rifle Association and great families and the real Republicans out there, and just working hard, playing hard Americans, including the, the Teamsters and the typical unions that always went Democrat, yeah. and the most embarrassing, apathetic segment of our society, society, the Second Amendment people, and the hunting population. They just didn't vote in a meaningful way. And when I saw that we... One, those three, everybody's going to, going to be Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, and, and Hillary's going to get all those. Huh? And yeah. then all of a sudden, I, I was emotional. I remember that video, yeah. Yeah, did you, did you see my... my yeah, well, we talked about it last time you were on. Yeah, I remember right. you talked so about how Michigan point, came home. So my point is, is that that is still possible, but here's the technical logic, here's the Google uh, Zuckerberger world. The week before, I think we talked about this last time, but it's important to, to, uh, uh, to restate it. I had between 15 million and 36 million Facebookers. I was like up there with Beyonce and and mm. Taylor Swift. Yeah. And and then the the next couple days it went down to three and a half million. Really? Yes. I had 15 million to 36 million. It was it was on record. You could, I don't know if you can still get back there. Probably scrub that. But that's how many Facebookers I had. My reach. And then all of a sudden, man, Nugent's too, makes too much sense, connects with too mm. many people, got too much information out there. We need to stop that, right? And so that's, yeah. that's a censorship indicator from the left and from uh, these high-tech, you know, comfortably numb goofballs that is really a scourge that is, is it's not overwhelming, it, but to overcome it should be job one of people who believe in the Constitution and the basics of America, God, yeah. family, country. I think it's 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 also harder. We're sort of handicapped in overcoming it because it's not a thought process that conservatives would employ. We don't really think about shutting well, down conservatives voices. conservatives traditionally have been very much like Mitt Romney. They well, no, but I mean, people like you and I, we, we wouldn't even think of wanting to ban someone no, off a platform just because they disagree with them. Don't. Right. If you don't want to eat meat, don't. So it's it's tough for us sometimes to go. Well, how do we solve this problem? Because we're trying to go through the thought process of getting rid of anyone who disagrees with us, which just really isn't a part of what we typically do. Yeah, you can leave that no, there. That's fine. I'm not. Uh, I I'm a, I'm the original liberal. Que sera sera. Whatever will be will be. Live mm-hmm. it up. Choose your own path in life. Just don't, you know, defecate upstream of my pursuit of happiness. If right. you like mm-hmm. to defecate near water, be sure you do it away from the water table so those of us pursuing happiness downstream from you don't have to live with your stupid choices. Right. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm the original libertarian liberal, um, but now it's been bastardized and completely 
altered uh, to where now they're just, it's like the gal that finally got her comeuppance when she took the sign away from a, a, a pro-life uh, guy. And when the, the uh, abortion freak in California attacked that old man and knocked him down and beat yeah. him because he disagreed with him. I w- if you disagree with me, I will never beat you up. Yeah. Just be very careful. Don't try to beat me up. Right, exactly. Yeah, I was just recently a brewery. We were just talking about this on Twitter. A brewery was calling people to hit uh, fascists in the UK really? over the head with a brick. I saw that. Yeah, over the head with a brick. Wow. This was an actual brewery. And they were. And by fascist, what it means, heck? you know, Nigel Farage. It means anyone who yeah, disagrees yeah. with them. That's the problem. I mean, the, the, the problem with this, and I've talked about this, is when you dehumanize your opposition in the sense that if Adolf Hitler were here right now, right, post-World War II, all the atrocities committed... I don't think it would be unreasonable for someone to try and get him, for someone to try and nail Hitler. I don't think so. I'd get him. Yeah, exactly. But now they've made you and myself and everyone here out to be a Nazi, to be Hitler. So when you equivocate that, it makes it okay to treat them however. We'd be the ultimate fighters against Nazis. Right. Yeah, Yeah, you would think so. (laughs) It's just, it's craziness. But, but, you know. Not big fans of the socialists we are. Hey, let me ask you this. Sure. Uh, The nationalists. You just mentioned Michigan. What do you think, uh, 2020? Do you think Trump wins Michigan again? Oh, boy. You know, I got dice, and I'm ready to roll them. I'll spit on them and make a couple prayers, because we didn't exactly landslide it in 2016. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I've said it before. A lot of people are angry at me because I'm properly condemning the politics of Michigan. I'm not condemning the good families of Michigan. There's still a bunch of them. But when you have the illegitimate punk daughter of Hillary Clinton as the governor, and you've got a constitutional oath violating attorney general in the once great state of Michigan, and mark my words, born in 1948 in Detroit, everyone knows that Michigan and Detroit was the productivity and work ethic epicenter of mankind. We were the arsenal of democracy. I was raised to do everything to the absolute best of your ability, to get up early, work harder than anybody else, stay late, and be proud of your accomplishments every day, whether it's painting a fence, delivering newspapers, or building forwards. The pride of ownership and success and excellence was ubiquitous and universal literally everywhere you look people cared and they were always there for each other and then i saw this liberal scourge metastasizing and you can stay home and we'll still send you a check and hey you're making too many widgets on the assembly line if you could back it down i can get you double overtime and if you break some of them (laughs) we can get you more money by replacing the ones that you intentionally made inferior Right. And don't, don't believe me when I tell you this. I've had them tell oh, me I know. this. I've had you tell me That's why I always say the, st- the stamp made in America doesn't always necessarily mean better anymore. So now, it, nothing breaks my heart more than to witness the greatest state in the nation still with an incredible population of the greatest, friendliest, most loving, generous, giving, hardworking, funny, cocky, music-loving maniacs that ever walked the earth, to see it turn into a suburb of San Francisco, a sanctuary hell where they intentionally disincentivize people, not just from excellence to mediocrity, but from nothingness to slovenliness, where they just expect generational uh, handouts and they get fat and stupid and, and, and enslaved by a liberal Democrat scam. It, it, yeah, and they so, try to blame it, you know, the left, they try to blame it on it being a single horse town with the automotive industry, but, it's but not. that's it's, not when it started in the no, 60s. Huge, the model huge cities. agriculture. Right. Uh, how about this? How about. Well, it was also before the automotive industry diversified Detroit's downturn, you know, right. in the 60s. So it wasn't it. You can go back to Jerome Cavanaugh. On the Model Cities program. Oh yeah, so, um, yeah. So I hate to I say it. Know. I think I think Ber- I think, uh, and everyone's going to get mad at me if I say this. I think if Bernie is a nominee, he probably would win Michigan. He had a lot of wouldn't uh, that, enthusiasm. that would be the next stab in the heart, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, I, I'll tell you this. But do we're you not think, giving up? No, we I'm definitely not giving up. Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Ohio. I'm not giving up in anything. How about this? How about the worst heartbreak of all? I could name a bunch of them. What's happened to San? What's happened to California? And I know real California. Real California is not San Francisco or L.A. I know real California. It's the toxic, you know, sanctuary city dog wagging the ta- uh, t- tails, wagging the otherwise red 
red constitutional dog. Right. Illinois, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, Delaware, w- Michigan. What planet does that work? Uh, make life better. What The abandonment of the pillars of quality of life. Being that as it may, boy, we are cocked, locked, and ready to rock the Glock Doc. We are rolling up our sleeves, and we're not going to give up on any of those states. I believe that if we can do next year what we did in 2016, that we will once again make sure that the non-presidential guy, you know, the old status quo, you know, swamp, deep state, corrupt as a way of life, criminality, James Comey, the the most obnoxious, disgusting, vulgar, anti-American gang of punks the world has ever known. I think that we can still do it if we can get, and it's going to be, you're, Believe me when I tell you, I you respect your elders. If we just get the licensed hunting families to vote in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and elsewhere, if we just, especially those states, because there's yeah. millions of them, yeah. if we just got them and the real Teamsters and the unions who have seen their leadership lie to them year after year and continue to whittle away at their paychecks and whittle away at their quality of life, if we get that army of conservative voters like we did in 2016, boom, we got it. Especially if it's guys that are going, oh, look at the uh, split screen on television. This is socialism in Venezuela, and I think it'll work here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what kind of, what kind, how much LSD do you have to shovel down your gullet to actually think this way? So I'm hoping that truth, logic, common sense, and that goodwill and decency and work ethic that is alive and well all across this country, I believe that if we just vote, yeah. we'll have whatever we want to have. And all I we think want a good, have, I hate to say it, it pains me to say, it, I think a good uh, portion of that work ethic, though, has been crippled in Michigan because of the corrupt. Uh, union leadership like you're talking about uh, and, and that's the thing that I, the I think stories. i think that when you look at a lot of the union um voting compared to hillary clinton who was seen as elite versus donald trump they preferred donald trump but i mean no one panders to uh to that area that sector of the country more than bernie sanders um and that's that's the challenge i mean i just try to look at it realistically when conservatives say there's no one who can beat him i think if it's biden obviously i think donald trump probably wins i think bernie could be a formidable yep. candidate in the midwest yeah but what is that what does that tell you how stupid do you... I mean, the dumbing down of America has been engineered right after World War II. Right. I mean, just look at the people in the left lane. There's a big giant sign, left lane for passing only. Da-dum, 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 da-dum. <laughs> yeah. I'm driving my car. Da-dum. They're in the left lane just blocking traffic. There's daylight for miles in front of them, and there's 150 <laughs> cars behind them. And I got that, okay, you son of a bitch, I'm... Yeah, I know. <laughs> so we were so talking about that before that we were on, on air. I had a, I knew a guy who got a ticket for going slow in the left lane, and I, 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 that's my favorite policeman ever. I'm going to give tickets for going slow in the left lane. Um, yeah, it's it's. It, but my point I is, I think that's, that's a federal crime. But yeah, that's a manifestation <laughs> of a cultural deprivation that has really uh, impacted uh, a, an unforgivable segment of our population. The dumbing down of America gives you the current Democrat Party. It is brain testing it that it it my my family my band my friends my hunting buddies our spirit of the wild production team our ted nugent camp for kids volunteers 31 years ted nugent camp for kids charity Eighteen thousand boys and girls between 7 and 17 have graduated from my children's charity 31 years wouldn't it be funny if one of them were pete booty gig Say again now? Wouldn't it be funny if one of those kids was Pete Booty Gig? It could have been because he was in the military and he shot good, I understand. Could have been. I could have taught him. (laughs) Um, Love Pete. (laughs) <laughs> I really do. I mean, uh, he's a he's a. Great, he seems like a decent guy. Honestly, yeah, seemed, I just don't I want him to be I don't in the Oval Office personally. But I understand he served great in the military. Um, he has taken on one of the most important duties of the human species, and that is to serve we the people by the Constitution. And I guess if he's done that in South Bend uh, for all these years, um, I, I suspect that he has some talents that he has somehow abandoned during his campaign mm. to lie to himself and go the ultra left route to try to uh, appease the dumbest of the dumb so that's a whole different story but but all those candidates i mean if there was a charity i could give to to keep these numb nuts talking i donate lots of money because every time they open their mouth the best of the americans working hard playing hard americans in the asset column because of sacrifice and risk and work ethic and productivity and and dedication to god family country every time those democrats speak 
week, the good Americans of the country go, huh? Yeah. What? Well, there's uh, a ch- yeah. you can give it just the DNC. Uh, the I'm tour, by the way, the is the tour is the music maybe do it again. My final qu- and it's uh, is it June July when you start? July July out in California. July all the way through August. Pasadena is the first. And tour here's day. the thing: it will be the best tour of my life. Greg Smith on bass, and Jason Hartless, 23 year old animal from Detroit on drums. It's it is the best music. If I wasn't in the band, I'd go every night and sit in the front row and dance naked. These guys are so good. These songs are so cool. The guitar tone, the bass tone, the drum tone. My crew is the best in the world. If we could have a military like my crew, there would be no wars. We'd already wiped out all the bad guys. So uh, I, I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody for keeping this career of mine going for 60 years are you kidding me started playing in detroit 60 years ago and every year the greatest most intense enthusiastic music lovers show up to all of my gigs and it's out of body i thank them with all my greasy backstrap infested heart and soul okay if you like this video you know you watch videos on youtube if i were jimmy kimmel if i were stephen colbert or trevor noah i would tell you to subscribe but i have no corporate overlords who demand that i do this demeaning promo I do the demeaning promo because I choose to. Subscribe or hit the notification bell because I need you. I need you. Please do it. 